thank you so much for giving us your time today. One of the great questions I think everybody would like to know is what is sleep and why do we need it? A very simple explanation of what sleep is, is sleep is a state that where the brain excludes perception of the environment. And you can have someone lying on their back with their eyelids taped open, a 50,000 candle power light flashing in their eyes, and at the moment of sleep, they no longer see the light. They become completely blind. So, wow. so I think sleep is essentially a state of perceptual shutdown. And in order to accomplish that, of course, you have to, to lie in a recumbent position. You can't fall asleep running around a, a track. Uh, the sleep is also like a drive. It's like uh, if you don't drink, you become thirsty. If you don't eat, you become hungry. If you don't sleep, you become sleepy. And, the, and you want to sleep now. The, but the, we know why you need food. We know why you need water. Uh, needing sleep is still a bit of a mystery. Uh, certainly, it is very, very dangerous not to sleep. I mean, you become sleepy, you fall asleep driving a car, or you, you make mistakes because you're, you know, your eyes are wanting to close. But whether you need sleep in order not to become ill or to avoid uh, you know, being infected by germs or something, that is not really certain. But it, what is certain is as you lose sleep, your performance deteriorates. And then I think this is very important for athletes and, and well, cognitive function, probably important for chess players. Probably Bobby Fischer got a lot of sleep when he won the World's Chess Championship. But I, I think we did a study recently uh, where uh, varsity basketball players here at Stanford University got extra sleep. And uh, they, their sprint time increased significantly over their personal best, their three-point shooting increased significantly over their personal best, and their uh, foul uh, free throw shooting increased significantly over their personal best. So when so, you say extra sleep, how much were they getting and how much well, did you increase that, it by? That's a, was to actually, rec the only way you can be certain someone is asleep is by uh, seeing their brain waves. Brain waves change from wakefulness to sleep in a very characteristic way. Uh, there are indirect measures, and we tend to use a, a wrist activity monitor just because it's about 90% uh, accurate, and that, that's how, that, that's, that is how we measured the extra sleep of the athletes. Uh, we wanted to see what extra sleep would do to cognitive ability. We had uh, arithmetic tasks and symbol substitution tasks, and it's sort of a standard IQ tests and, and people perform better when they got extra sleep. But it, two of the uh, subjects were swimmers and they, they came back, they were amazed that they got their personal best increased, it got better. You know, they couldn't believe it. Really? Because they had a personal best, you know, that every athlete has some personal best. They, so their times improve. No matter how much they try, they cannot go beyond that. And yet these two swimmers did and then we said, wow, this is interesting. That's when we then uh, began to test the basketball players. And uh, as I said, it, there's only, there, there are studies in the literature, uh, but not recently. Ours is uh, the most recent, which we have published on the basketball players here at Stanford. And I've, I've already talked about that, where yeah. they, everything got better. And now you would think that would be a signal for everybody, but but some people refuse to get extra sleep no matter what. You know, my lifestyle demands that I behave a certain way. Oh, you want but to I, but I really think today. that if, if we really got this inculcated into our athletic community, Stanford would be number one in everything.